Thank you. Tubishvat. We're we're starting the seder, as is customary in the Kalbach Shul. We eat a little something. I'm sorry that we can't share with you. It's delicious. We didn't have uh, Julie to help us and and Freddy, but we had uh, Deli Kasba, <laughs> Oh Nuts, and the produce guy on uh, the Turkish guys who sell fruits on uh, uh, on Broadway. Those are the people, other than the doorman, they're the 24-7 crowd in, in Manhattan. So uh, we're really going to have a spectacular Tuba Shvat Seder, even though we're physically in different places, we're going to actually learn about how we can connect beyond physical time. We're going to learn about that today. We're going to first make a mezonas on this. Baruch Atah Adnei Lanach Olam Baruch Amen. Mm. 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 Everybody to get their uh, tubishvat 
Haggadah, we put out uh, a couple years back, a special Tubishvat Haggadah from the Kalbach Shul. And you should have gotten it in an email from uh, the Kalbach Shul yep. yesterday. I got, got it. it. Yep. You got it. Also, if you didn't get it for some reason, you should print it out right now if you can or have another device to read it off of so you can follow along. Or it's on my Facebook page, Naftali Citron, and on the Kalbach Shul, www.thekalbachshul.org. Um, print it out or get a device that you could take a look at it. So we're going to start in a, a couple moments with the world of Asiya, with the world of action. But first, like uh, all the time, we need, we need action. So we're going to need uh, Noah to make sure everybody's happy. How's every one of their we'll saying? No, no complaints. Same no complaints. Good, so. No complaints. That's the most it's worrisome the thing. thing yeah. you know? It's all we try in life. No complaints. Yeah. So it's a great journey. And I'm going to get, um, I'm going to get, I left my Haggadah in the kitchen. Now you're going to ask, why did I leave, why did I leave my Haggadah in the kitchen? Why would it be in the kitchen? Ah, good. It was. Because it's got the ingredients. <laughs> it's got the it's got the shopping list. That's what I, this morning when I said, "What do I need for Tubishvat?" I looked at the Haggadah, and it had the list of the fruits that we were going to need for tonight. I already ordered. Uh, well, Melissa ordered a wonderful platter from O Nuts. Many of you also ordered uh, dry fruits, which is great. But I wanted to supplement it with some great fruits from uh, from Broadway. So to do that, we're going to be going through three different plates of food. And then the fourth level is not a, a food, but instead is represented by scent, which we'll talk to you about as we get closer to it. So so this uh, terrible thing happened to me, I think the second time in my life, I was at a loss of words for a second. It's never happened. Mm. Maybe I should try it more. Maybe <laughs> I'd be a better person <laughs> if I for a moment didn't know what to say. Um, but that's what's good about having a manual, you know, in case you're ever stuck in life and you don't know what to do, you just pick up the manual and it tells you what to do. And I heard something from my grandfather that was saying that there's, there's two things we are in life. One is we are actors and we're acting upon our lives. We're, we're choosing certain things. And the other is that we're just walking in a garden and that just kind of clears everything out. It's beyond, we, we're not making choices and therefore there's no stress. And that's what Tu is, the second. He had a beautiful Torah. It's just, uh, thank you, Shlomo Katz, for sending it to me. Um, just an awesome Torah. He really gets into this idea of Tu as being higher and not about you making a choice. It just is the way things are. And that also reminds me of this, this concept of the concept of, of nature being like a, a, a circle or a cycle or an orbit, a sphere, a season that comes back again, certain parts of our nature that some in some ways are very good. They just kind of keep reoccurring. They, we, we, we sometimes have to tinkle, tinkle with them, is that a word? Like kind of tinkle with a car. Tinker. Tinker. Tinkle is something else. Okay, I should <laughs> not that type of tinkle. Tink tinker. Tinker with them. Okay, thank you, Noah. This is embarrassing. Um, so that's a little bit about the energy of, of Tubishvat. It's just kind of this when you, you when you go out into the nature, you kind of experience this this reset button where it sets you into this kind of primal way of being. 
and, and, it, and it even proceeds in a way and to some extent transcends the thought process that we're always weighing and evaluating and choosing. Okay, so that's a little bit about the, the day of Tuba Shvat. Now we're gonna do the world of action. So uh, um, I have to eat something first. Why don't you play a little bit? Action. I'm gonna, see ya. I'm gonna get another, I'm gonna get this in the meantime. start on page three with the tree of life and God made the tree in the garden and said of every tree of the garden you may freely eat but the tree of knowledge of good and bad you must not eat of it that's in voracious Adam and Eve ate from the tree and were sent out of the garden of Eden so that they did not eat from the tree of life and live forever. The description of the garden of Eden, its trees, its fruits, Adam and Eve's relationship with what, that which grew from the ground. That's where the Kabbalists draw a lot of inspiration for understanding the Maisa Bereshis, the mysteries of creation, the lush imagery of the garden and its rivers and the mists paint the Kabbalistic picture of the truly spiritual qualities of the vegetation, the water, and the earth. Mm. The eight Hachai in the Tree of Life is what this allows us to repair the brokenness that is inherent in the world. The Kabbalists developed a system known as the Ten Spherot, the methodology of bettering oneself and making sense of the randomness of life's events. So instead of a dangerous, weedy and neglected yard, life becomes a beautiful garden, a tree with its roots in the ground and its branches closer to heaven. It's a metaphor for the cosmic layout of the universe, so much so that the Kabbalists referred to the map they drew of the mystical worlds as an ilan, ilanot, as trees. These maps describe the dynamic, dynamic nature of divine energies that influence our inner lives and are influenced by our activities like a tree that lives and breathes, takes in and gives out. The sphero to allow us to be in a relationship with the Holy One, blessed be he. The biblical tree of life is much like any other tree. It had roots, a trunk, branches, leaves, and fruit. And much like the trees of the rainforest, which have four distinct layers, forest floor, understory, canopy layer, and emergent layer, the tree of life represents four stages of spiritual development, which the Kabbalists refer to as four worlds. In the course of the Tubushvat Seder, we'll explore the inner workings of these four worlds. 
through fruit and wine, song, Torah, and even our sense of smell. Let's do that. All right, join us. Eli, Eli, Shelo Igamel Leolam, Achol Ve'ayam, Rishu Shel Amayim, Be'ak Hashamayim, Tfilat Adam, Achol Ve'ayam, Rishu Shel Beautiful. Page five. Worlds. We define our world in terms of three things, time and space and self. So before exploring the four worlds, we must explore these three concepts. Time is the ongoing sequence of events taking place. In the simplest sense is what we measure in seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, and years. Space refers to the dimension of height, depth, and width in which all things exist and move. It could be as large as a universe, a galaxy, or a solar system. It could also refer to Earth, a single continent, a country, a city, a block, a home, or a room. Even a tiny cell and atoms take up space. Self is consciousness, whether of a human being, a soul, or an angel. We begin with the world of Asiya. Time, space, and self are not as static as one may think. According to Einstein's theory of relativity, the bend in space caused by gravity can actually affect the speed of light. In addition, in quantum theory, the simple act of observing a particle can cause it to behave as a wave rather than a particle. What we see from this is that time, space, and self actually relate to each other and affect each other to the point in which time and space and self are no longer distinct entities, but rather like different body parts that together make up a whole. In this world, the world of Asiya, these three body parts are bound by the laws of physics. The world of Asiya means action. This is the world, page six. This is the world where a soul is intertwined with the body and needs to apply itself to making the world a better place through correct actions. While good intentions are very important, they're not enough to create the transformation of darkness of this world into light and the bitterness into sweetness. The Torah, or lessons that we are given aims to enable us to transform ourselves in the time and space that we inhabit. The individual person is given opportunities to improve the world through mitzvot, such as tzedakah, charity, giving to those in need, acting kind towards a stranger, visiting the sick, honoring the elderly, respecting parents and creating a just society of law-abiding citizens who treat one another with dignity while honoring the less fortunate. One day every week, Shabbat, we can get in touch with the divine and recognize that time, space, and self are created and have a source in God and continue to be in a relationship with God. This weekly reflection allows people to connect to their deeper selves, transforming their inner world by recognizing the divine source of all. This also creates a community of people who together can search out God in prayer and ritual. Each of the holidays of the Torah commemorates a special historical moment, but they are so much more than that. The holidays are opportunities to connect to certain spiritual energies such as freedom, inspiration, rededication, forgiveness, joy, and gratitude. The mitzvot, actions of each holiday, are the key to connecting to these principles. For example, eating matzah on Passover allows us the real experience of going from slavery to freedom. Sitting in a sukkah on Sukkot allows us to find joy in the simple things in our lives. Hearing the shofar on Rosh Hashanah awakens us to rededicate ourselves to a higher calling. Since we are human beings, we function not as robots, but as a combination of intellect, emotions, and action. This system is seen by the Kabbalists as a reflection of a divine system called the Ten Sefirot. The first three of the Ten Sefirot are will, one, wisdom, two, understanding, three. 
our cognitive abilities. The sphere would continue with our six emotional capabilities. Four, loving kindness. Five, judgment. Six, compassion. Mm -hmm. Seven, desire to win and overcome. Eight, empathy. Nine, bonding. The last sphere is 10, actualization, when our thoughts and feelings turn into words and deeds. In this world of action, I see how most of our thoughts, feelings revolve around what we need to do to survive. But as we rise up the ladder of consciousness into higher worlds, the focus will turn from external change and survival to the inner sense of connectivity and ultimately unity with the divine source. Page eight. Fruits. The fruits of the world of Asiya are those of hard, inedible shells, inedible shell protecting the inner fruit. The outer shell is called the klipa, plural, klipot, which cabalistically means the animalistic tendencies that both preserve our existence and threaten it when not integrated properly. While a shell protects what's inside, it also deters. When one can't break through the outer shell, one can't access what is good and true on the inside. Choose from the following. Pomegranates. Walt, where's your plate there? We've got different um, almonds, pistachios, um, Brazil nuts, pecans, chestnuts. We don't have all of them, but we have quite a few. And and uh, for the wine, like all the Passover, like at the Passover, said when we celebrate our feast in the Kabbalist, we're accustomed to drinking four cups of wine, corresponding to the four worlds on Tu B'Shvat. For the first world of Asiya, we use white wine. The white reminds us of the will, the whiteness of the winter, the harshest of our four seasons, in which. Fields seem to lie dormant, but underneath the hibernation, there is potential, page nine, potential for the renewal that will come in the spring when the snow will melt into water and cause the trees to flourish. Okay. So I'm gonna pour myself already a cup of wine in anticipation of it. So now we're going to make the prayer on the bottom of page nine before the eating of the fruit of the world of Asiya. And I love pomegranates, by the way. I'm going to already start holding my pomegranate in anticipation of this beautiful fruit. May it be your will that through the eating of these fruits, we unify the Holy One, blessed be He and the Shekhinah. Through the eating of this fruit, may I rectify within my own soul some part of my relationship with the world of action, with consumption and food, so that I may have energy to do good in the world, so that I may elevate the sparks which have fallen into the world so that they may be extracted from their shells and rise so the light of Tau may be integrated into the world of Tikkun. So just for your information, for all of the different, we're making the bracha on each each world. We're going to make a separate bracha because we're only, we're only having in mind the ha'ats for the fruits 
of the world of Asiya. And the same thing when we drink the cup of wine, we're only having the bracha in mind for that cup of wine. There's a thing in uh, brachot where it goes by Hesach Hadas, by wine also during the week, according to the Gemara, you make a bracha every time, unless you know you're going to drink five cups and you're intending to drink five cups. You, but when you're only drinking one cup at a time, you make a bracha on each cup. So right now, we're only drinking one cup, only have in mind this cup, only have in mind these fruits, because we're going to make another bracha later. So we're going to make the bracha on page 10. And you make a shechianu. I'm going to make, actually, I'm going to have to hold up one of the nuts that I haven't, that I can make a shechianu on. I have pomegranates too often to make the shechianu on. <laughs> This nut I haven't had in a long time because that's I bahu kata hadai nai I became I have not had pomegranates this year. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, so we're going to take a few minutes here to, to eat something. You could play something if you want, but eat, eat, a, eat a minute and then. A little bit more pomegranate. A little more here. <laughs> and then, this is a meditation mm -hmm. on the sweetness and the saltiness of the world of action. We got to fix our actions. It should only be so easy as eating a few fruits and nuts. But why not? <laughs> so you could eat that pomegranate. This is delicious. I'll say Thank something. You. You're good. It's unbelievable. That's so good. All right. What can I tell you? That's a gift from God. 
You know, first, I want everyone just to really relax, just to enjoy themselves. Nothing else, nothing, nothing more, nothing less. Just to taste how sweet the fruit is. You know, I had a Elter Elter Zeda 400 years ago named the, the, the Bach, the Holy Bach. Shlomo would talk about him a lot. Anyway, the, there was a practice that um, people would say, I want to go to Eretz Yisrael. I want to make Aliyah so I can eat the fruits of Eretz Yisrael. And a lot of rabbis got really angry. They're like, really? That's why you want to go to the Holy Land is to eat the fruits because you like a good fruit. Yeah, it's true. Like so nowadays, some people say they want to go there for the falafel. <laughs> so I mean, for real, <laughs> people like like like. There's nowhere you can get a falafel like this. We have to come and Absolutely. live here. So the, my Elter Zeda, 400 years ago, said, you know, and he he was defending those people. He said, no, you don't understand. When you eat the fruits of Israel. You actually can, the sweetness of the fruit is tasting a little bit of the sweetness of the shrina. And I read it the other day. I was, mom, should touch, it touched my heart. I was just crying because it went to such a deep place. So my friends, you can even say, if you eat the fruits that the land of Israel are praised with, where we're going to eat a bunch of them tonight, the pomegranate, the olive, the date, the fig, the grapes, those are all fruits. And then every time you have uh, hamotzi or mizonos, you have bread or, or cookies or cake, the wheat, spelt, right? These are, these are, also, these are also special. They're also, um, we praise the land, Eretz Chitas Ora, right? Uh, not spelled, barley. Um, these, are, these are things that, are special to the land of Israel that through them we're still connected to the land of Israel, which is connected to the Shekhinah. And to tell you the truth, the more you study the laws of the blessings that you make on the food before and after, and because that's, I'm spending a lot of time. If you haven't had a chance, please sign up, please, please, I'm begging you to sign up for a learning opportunity every week to spend either five minutes or an hour or two hours studying tractate brachot. We're going through it one daf a week and I have nothing against Parsha sheets, but I'm gonna say it again, Parsha sheets are great, but you're not really learning anything cumulative, meaning because you're not learning how to learn. You're not, you're, you're just learning, you're getting inspired. That's, that's wonderful, that's good. But chances are that after 10 years of learning Parsha sheets, you still won't understand how to learn a Rashi. You still won't understand what a, what a Mishnah is, what a Gemara is, what a Tosefta is, what the Ran, the Rif, the Rush are. I want you to be Talmud Chacham. There's no reason why you can't be the greatest scholars. You can't be the greatest scholars in the world. Each one of you can be a tremendous scholar. And not just a regular scholar that's in a book. That is going to translate in the way that you act every, life, every day in your life. It's going to give meaning to everything you do in your life. I'm blessing you with a life of understanding and a life of wisdom and a life of insight and a life of inspiration. So, but you have to, Mama learn my, my grandfather and the Shlomo, right? Their pictures are right behind me. They were begging the Chavra to go and learn, not just to dance, because if you learn, you'll dance even more. You'll mm -hmm. dance even more. Mm -hmm. So that's the more you learn about brachos, the more you learn about the intricacies of how the food that we're eating, the blessing is really derived from some mitzvah in different food, the different blessings and different foods have different, they each have their own connection to a different mitzvah. Many of them associated with the land of Israel. If you learn it in depth, you'll see it. And like I said, you sign up, tell the shul, call the shul, call Avi, call Melissa, email info at Kalbashul, ask them to be added to the weekly email for the top 10 uh, teachings on the daf, and you won't regret it. You will not regret it. So that's the things we're mamish learning about the last uh, a couple of weeks, and we're going to continue to learn about it. I'm really excited to be able to, to spend time learning in a meaningful way that will impact how we eat and how, and how we consume things and make it part of something meaningful rather than just survival. Survive we must. With that in mind, we're going to go a little higher. 
We're gonna take the first cup of wine, the white cup of wine. Let me tell you a little secret. This is nothing spiritual. One of the best kosher wines is only $25. The best reds are $200, $300. The best whites are $25. Rush, I mean, other than Binyamin's four gate Chardonnay, you've got Herzog Special Reserve Chardonnay, Russian River. 25 bucks, unbelievable. Okay. You're not endorsed by them? <laughs> they were not endorsed <laughs> by them, but I love it. <laughs> Could have left it in the fridge a little longer, but it's, <laughs> it's pretty good. Like it. mm. Smooth. You, taste, you could taste the, the, the reason why I brought this wine, I brought it from home, is because you could taste the fruit. Yes, you could taste the, I, I the sweet and mamish, like the fruit is just bursting out of it, bursting like, like delicious. Absolutely. Mm. See where we go from here. Okay, we read a little bit about pomegranates on page 11. You could read that on your own. Um, and you could also read page 12 on your own, which is all about the importance of preserving the environment from Aramban, a beautiful teaching about how it is a violation of certain mitzvot to cause a destruction of a species. And page 12 on the bottom has some actual real world, world of Asiya action plan to make the world a little, a little, little better for our environment, for our future, for the world's future. Go ahead, Noah. Yes, Page 13, the world of Yitzira. In the world of Asiya, the focus is on the mitzvot of the Torah, externally measurable activities, but the goal is to move beyond the simple act of observance and begin to experience the love and awe of divine service. While the world of action is not empty of emotion, they're often so bound up in the material experience that it is hard to separate them to get a pure sense of an emotion rising above the physical response. The second world is known as the world of Yitzira, formation. In this world, the six emotional sefira, loving kindness, judgment, compassion, desire to win and, over, and, and overcome, empathy, 
and bonding are the framework for understanding the concepts of time, space, and self. As we enter into the digital age, many new facets of technological connectivity such as Facebook allow us to have virtual friends who we may never have actually met. The online community does not have the structure of buildings, but it constitutes a different type of space. In fact, we are constantly redefining space now, using it to refer not to just to spatial distance, but to distance in the world of ideas. Entering into the second world, we realize that space can be more loosely defined to encompass those to whom we feel a spiritual and emotional connection. In the world of formation, physical space recedes and is replaced by this type of non-spatial space. It's like a virtual world inhabited by angels and souls. The relationship to one another helps to find the space that distance that the space that distance them or bring them together. The Kabbalists call this space in this world palaces or chambers. Those involved in the Maaseh Merkava, work of the divine chariots, write extensively about traveling into dimensions that were vast and elaborate, thrilling and terrifying. In some ways, they modeled, page 14, the greatest ability to imagine traveling through space. And yet, what they were trying to describe was the longing and awe of entering into the sacred space of the second world. In simpler words, when you feel very close to somebody who is many miles or perhaps even generations away, that closeness may be entering into this dimension. Of course, it's not a full entry because you're still bound by the world of action and its laws. I mean, as long as you're physically alive, but you have touched a portal into this dimension. We're on page 14, the second paragraph, time. Time in this world isn't defined by the physical movement of the sun and moon, but more of the subtle perception of change within an emotional framework. The self of the world of Yitzira refers to the spiritual beings which are embodiments of these emotions. Okay, now we're gonna do a meditation on compassion for the soul. It's easy to recognize when our bodies feel bad and to have compassion for ourselves that makes us wanna fix whatever is wrong. But our neshamot, souls, are also in great need of compassion. Our spiritual lives are often so frugal that our souls are starving to be nurtured. Our worldly concerns too often take us away from matter, matters of the spirit. In this meditation practice, we turn our feelings of compassion inwards to our, towards our soul. In the world of Yitzhira, the main experience is that of love, awe, compassion, strength, empathy, and connectivity in our relationship with the divine. It is important to have a healthy, loving relationship not just with the people in our lives, but with the divine. While even the action mitzvot are supposed to be done with intention and emotion, the mitzvot of the world of formation deals specifically with the realm of faith and feeling, with the emotions that make us want to connect to God. We will now pause and begin a guided meditation. Ah, beautiful. Okay, so now we're going to do a little exercise. Not too much, don't worry. You're going to stay in your seat. You're going to raise your arms, and you're going to move your head towards your right arm like it's a cushion and just by the way if you're very you know if you're disabled in any way like me <laughs> don't do this ask your doctor for permission i'm not taking any liability here <laughs> i'm getting a lawsuit i did the uh stretching meditation <laughs> he told me to do this thing ask your doctor for permission before you, you know when you open up like a you ever open up like one of these, uh, you know, bicycles or something? They say, uh, ask your doctor before you do this. Okay, so ask your doctor before. Okay, he called you back. If he told you, you could do it. So then follow the instructions. Move your head to the right as, as if your arm was a pillow. And then move your head to the left as if your left arm is a pillow. And just uh, just like lie on your left arm. Okay, then move your, your head forward a little bit. Keep, okay, and back, and a little bit back, as far back as you can go without losing your kippah. <laughs> okay, ah, oh. that's good. Now move your arms forward. You could separate them and just move them forward and down, down all the way to your knees. And then hold on to your knees and move your shoulders back. Okay, let go. Just let your arms to the side. Take a deep breath. 
and exhale. Take another deep breath and exhale. And now just let your arm, your right arm feel like it's kind of going down. Gravity's pulling it a little bit down, just an inch or two lower than the left arm. And then kind of move your fingers around four or five times and make a fist after each time, a lightly clenched fit, fist. And then move your elbow away from you and then back and then away from you and then back. Okay, and then relax your right hand. Now we'll do that with the left hand. Turn your elbow out and in and out and clench your fist lightly and open it up fully and move each of your fingers around five, six times. And then just move your arm back and then just let it relax. Take another two deep breaths. Uh, feel the tingling in your fingers. I don't know what that means. I'll have to ask my doctor. Uh, probably not good blood circulation or something. Okay. Now tighten up your right foot and clench the muscle of your calf and then let it relax and then stretch out your right leg and then bring it back to you. And then do the same thing, move around your right, your left foot and clench up the muscles of your left calf muscle and then relax and then stretch out your left leg as far as it can go and then bring it back to you. This is my stretching, I think for the month, basically. Okay. Now your, your back should be straight up against the chair and take a deep breath in, inhale. And slowly exhale. Inhale. And slowly exhale, you wanna do a little back up here, a little meditative music. And just close your eyes gently and breathe, keep breathing deeply. Inhale and exhale. I want you to imagine that you're in a redwood grove was hot all day sun was shining the redwood groves are mostly in California and it could get pretty hot but as soon as you entered into the redwood grove you felt the cool air clean air and all the things you might have been concerned about just instantly departed from you and now you're just really so calm and so cool physically and emotionally ah, it's just so beautiful there's nothing that the redwoods can't really just fix in you. And if you if you if they can't fix you at least temporarily you got to go right away to the hospital. You know. And in the redwood grove you walk further into the grove it's just as you each step is more beautiful than the next. Each tree is more majestic and alive. And just your eyes and your nose and your ears, they're just, just saturated with the beauty. The beauty of each tree, the beauty of what's underfoot, the soft, 
pine needles or whatever they are exactly that have turned into uh, a, 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 a a 10 foot car soft carpet and there are gurgling brooks in the distance that you hear and little animals chirping and running around. Then there's a giant tree in the middle of the garden. And of all the trees, that's the tree that you feel you're most drawn to. You feel as if there's a power in the tree, as if there's a soul in the tree, a heartbeat in the tree. And it's light, but it's not lit. It's like, it's like, it's hard to explain. It's there, but it's not physically there. It's just with your inner sensory perception. There's a connection. What it really is, is it's the first tree in the redwood growth. It's the father of all the redwoods, the mother of all the redwoods. It's thousands of years old. And some of the trees are just as big as it, just as majestic, but this tree is where it all started. And underneath all the redwoods, this is true, at the root level, the roots are all holding on to one another. So that for miles, the roots are interlinked with one another. And all of a sudden you understand that the tree in the center of the redwood grove is just something that's calling out to you to be connected to who you are to be connected to where you come from, to hold on to each other, to remember who you are. And once you realize this, the people who are dead a long time ago are still there, are still very much present in your life. They're still holding you on the root level. The root level is not bound by time and space. The root level you realize is across continents, across time. It's the soul, it's the neshama, it's the ikar, it's the, it's the root. And you think about your Baba and your Zayda how they might have escaped just barely from the Holocaust or pre-war Europe or Russia in the 20s. And how many miracles it had to happen for you to be here right now. And what is that calling out for you to do today, tomorrow with yourself? You know, the other day, I opened up the Shulchan Aruch of the Alter Rebbe of Chabad. And I said to myself, did he have me in mind? Did he put me in a safer? Will I be part of that shall shall us? Will I be part of that chain of trees in the forest? Will I be connected? Will I will I leave a connection? Will I be connected to my brothers and sisters and my cousins and community and friends? Will we support one another? Will we be connected on the root level, on the soul level, like those those redwoods? Let's go into the garden, to the place of the divine presence. To the place that that's why we're destined to be here on this earth.
to be able to say, My Rabbi Masecha Hashem, Kulam Bechach Masisa, how glorious are the acts of creation. You look at the world and you realize that the miracle of the world itself is a miracle. What we call science is a miracle. The fact that there's order in the world, that's the greatest miracle of all. It's a teaching of the Baal Shem Tov. One time somebody came to the Baal Shem Tov and said, Holy Baal Shem Tov, I don't have faith because I'm a scientist. And the Baal Shem Tov says, the problem isn't that you're a scientist, it's that you think science and God are disconnected from one another. If you would understand that God works through science, you would have faith and still be a scientist. Hey, the Gabal Shemto, holy Bal Shemto, breathe into us the breath of the world of Yitzira, the world of Abba, Biachva, Bishal, Bereos, the world of love, the world of compassion, the world of Rachamim. Rachamim Rabim, have compassion on my soul. Have compassion so that we may be granted peace between husband and wife, between brother and brother, between sister and sister. And then the light of the redwood grove, it's so clear that that's where you really belong. That's who you really are. You have to go in the world. You have to make a living. You have to deal with tall buildings in Manhattan or in Florida or in New Jersey. But your heart is in Yerushalayim. Your heart is in the Garden of Eden. Oh, see. 
So now we finish the meditation and we come to the world of Yitzira on page 15. The fruits of this world have soft, edible outsides with hard pits on the inside. Like these. Hmm. Cherries, dates. This represents the more accessible energy of the world of formation. It's more easily approachable once we move past our focus on physical necessities and begin to develop our softer, more emotional side. However, there's still a pit. Many emotions, if not balanced, will end up with some klipa, some inaccessible element. While the world of emotions is in theory a balanced world in which there should be no shortcomings, there is work to be done. Choose from the following. Dates, olives, apricots, plums. Some people say apples. Yeah, <laughs> we have, pits, they, yeah apples. apples. Yeah, yeah. Some people eat the pits. If you don't eat the pits, then <laughs> apples. I don't eat the pits. So they're poisonous. Yeah, I don't eat them. Peaches or whatever these these things, dried peaches. peaches. We have lots of dried peaches. Persimmons, loquats, jujubes, cherries. The wine is going to be uh, page 16. The white, wine of the second world is white with a little bit of red. Now I'm going to have to ruin this beautiful white wine with a little bit of red. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Okay. This reminds us of spring when the coldness of winter gives way to more sunshine and a reawakening of our emotions. Okay. Uh, Noah's going to play. We have a few songs for him to do summer, all of on page 16. You need the extra song or? Are you page, you no. don't want to, you don't like any of them? Which ones? It's page oh, these, 16. Oh, oh, of course. And one of them, at least Sorry, one I, of them I, should I, be good enough. All of uh, them are great. It's all of them. Long. Okay. Long. Okay. Good. Hi. Let's do Hine Matov. Okay. So Hine Matov is a beautiful yeah. song. Classic. Everyone sing along. We can see you all here. Imagine as if we're physically sitting together. Oh, 
Beautiful. You'll notice those are not Kalbach, they're not Hasidic, they're Israeli songs, because we have to recognize that a big part of the rebirth of the land of Israel is connected to the land, to the physical earth, and the and the produce and the fruits mm. and that promise and the and many of the Zionist settlers who weren't religious in a classical sense of of mitzvot were religious in a sense of believing in the sanctity of the ground of Israel and the fruits of Israel, and they must have tasted the shechina. And it they 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 may not have known that it's called the shechina. But if we were going to take the Bach, the Heilige Bach's teaching, that the sweetness of the fruit of the land of Israel is really the sweetness of the Shechina, they were really tasting the Shechina when they tasted their oranges and their bananas on their different kibbutzim that they, that they resettled the land with. So we're now going to make the prayer for the eating of the fruit of the world of Yitzira. I'm going to hold on to a Cherry, bottom of page 16. You know what I'm going to do before I do that? I'm going to just pour some wine because I like to have, like the Seder, you know, you like to have the wine poured like an hour in advance. And that way, <laughs> that way uh, you can stain your shirt a bunch of times. No, I don't want to make you drink too much. You have your car, whatever you need to do. Yeah. Yeah. Yossi. Yossi, yeah. <laughs> So a little, it's, it's the white wine with a touch of red. Very pretty. By the way, one of the things they tell you, the four S's in wine, the first one is sight. You got to look at your wine. You got to see the color of your wine. And it's a whole other thing is seeing everything, the, all the fruits, the beautiful colors of all of these fruits, right? They're just the fruits themselves. And, and what, is, what, is, what is color? It's a, it's a wavelength. It's a light. In a certain different wavelengths of light. Like the Kabbalists talk about the spirot connected to the different colors. It's all really so deep. So we pick up our, our, our cherry or whatever your fruit of the date. It should be, it actually should be the date. Because the date is the land that the land of Israel is praised with. May it be your will that through the eating of these fruits we unify the Holy One, blessed be He and the Shekhinah. Through the eating of this fruit, may I rectify within my own soul some part of my relationship with the world of formation, with consumption and food, so that I may have energy to do good in the world, so that I may elevate the sparks which have fallen into this world, so they may be extracted from their shells and rise, so the light of toe may be reintegrated into the world of Tikkun, page 17. If you haven't yet picked up your fruit, please pick up the fruit for the blessing. I baruch ato adonai Eloheinu melech ha'ilam I Let's take a, a meditative eating opportunity here and just taste the sweetness, the sweetness coming ultimately from Shechina. Mm. I 
make the blessing on the white wine that'll splash of red. Mm. <laughs> Very nice. Okay, read number 17, the second half, and number 18. Read that on your own. Great stuff from the Ishpitzer and Rabbi Nachman there. And we'll do a song, and then we'll uh, come back after the music. We'll read from page 19 together. Go ahead. What? He's not here. He's not coming. Not coming on. <laughs> Great having Noah here. He's amazing. It's, pleasure. it's, it's been amazing. Tradition now. I think it's probably ten it's a, years. It's a long, more. Yeah, at least. At least yeah. <laughs> yeah. This seder, when it come, before you or me, I mean, this has been going it's, on it's forty. Been, yeah. I mean, we were yeah. alive, but uh, it's going I, on forty-five I years. Think probably it's been five years. I think about it. Yeah. It's like three times that much. So. This seder has been going on. <laughs> this is one of the world's most continuous running sedarim, basically, and 
in America, let's say, maybe in Israel or it's Europe. Year. It's, uh, I, can, uh, I can picture last year very clearly. It's right yeah, here, yeah, a room full of people. Exactly. Exactly. So now we're going to read a little bit about the world of Bria on page 19. As we ascend the spiritual ladder of consciousness, that which was previously unconscious becomes revealed. That which was underneath the surface is exposed. And we reveal the mysteries we enter in the tikkun, the fixing of mochen, of mind, the consciousness. Many of our thoughts, feelings, and actions come about due to the misuse of our intellectual gifts. The world of Bria, creation, understanding, is where we begin to see the individualized self and where we have the potential to become inspired and to readjust our thoughts and feelings based on a more divinely aware intellect. Basically, the world of Bria is about understanding. So the more you understand, the more self-actualized you are. You, you get to, to the root of why you're here, what your purpose is, how your unique qualities give you those abilities to do the things that you do and how to do them best. And also in your relationship with God, it goes from just observance, which is fantastic. Just observing is the highest of the high to a sense of satisfaction because there's no comparison to knowing what you're accomplishing when you do something compared to just doing without knowing. Since the world of Bria is the world of knowing, and when you know what you're doing and you understand what you're doing, that gives great significance and, and power to, to you, to what it is that you are understanding about your, 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 your goals and your purposes and what it is that you're doing in this world. Okay. So that's a little bit about Bina and the fruits of the world of Bina are completely edible on the bottom of 19. I skipped a little bit inside and out representing the lack of klipot, the lack of negativity that we need that would need to, to be overcome. So we choose from the following. I'm actually going to get uh, these two platters here. <laughs> Choose from the following grapes. We're on page 20 now. That's what grapes look like. In case you can't hear me, you can see these are grapes. Carobs, very important. Berries, right? We've got uh, blueberries here and cranberries here. Figs, oh no. No, can you play a song while I get the figs? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you gotta get the fix. It's not whole <laughs> Um, 
Okay, pairs. I think um, that that might be a pair. I might have put it in the wrong world. A dried pear. And raisins. We got plenty of raisins, white raisins, and other colored raisins. And I don't know what this is. It came in the fruit oh, basket. Wow. <laughs> it's very cool. It's like a it's crack. A, it's a coral. Yeah. yeah, it's very cool. And then I stuck in some papaya. I don't. Pious to have a they don't really belong in this world because they have a shell. Is it edible? Not really. Okay, whatever. Don't eat papayas. Okay. The world of Bria, page 20, represents the seat of the divine glory. It's also considered the first world to be created something from nothing. In that the souls and angels that inhabit this world begin to have slight perceptions of themselves, and through their own, and, and though their main focus is divine, they begin to have a sense of purpose. In the world of Bria, a person finds that ideas can inspire lasting change. This is done through his bonanut, meditation and contemplation, in which the practitioner begin, practices the knowledge of the divine. Here is the prayer before eating the fruit of the world of Bria. Last paragraph on page 20, please pick up a fruit. Unless you're sensitive to the touch of the stickiness of the fruit, then wait till the blessing. Mm -hmm. May it be your will that through the eating of these fruits we unify the Holy One, blessed be and the Shrina. Through the eating of this fruit, may I rectify within my own soul some part of my relationship with the world of creation, with consumption and food. So that I may have energy to do good in the world, so that I may elevate the sparks which have fallen into this world, to the world, so they may be extracted from the cells and rise, so that the light of Toh may be reintegrated into the world of Tikkun. Now, definitely pick it up. We're going to make the blessing. I'm glad you went back to the figs. They say the fig might have been the fruit of the tree of knowledge. So how could I not go back for a fig? You know? <laughs> All the, after all these years, or it might have been a grape. Mm. Yeah, but both are made with fruit. They're good, fresh, and they're good. It might have been wine. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was a raisin. Because a raisin is a grape. I have to try this after the. <laughs> <laughs> it's really funky. It must be a. Hmm. There's something that be a dragon fruit or something like that. Yeah, maybe something dragon like that. Fruit. Yeah. We've got dried dragon fruit. Oh, it's good. Man, 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 man.
Okay, so we now we take red wine. I gave you grape juice. Red grape a little juice. easier. Or red grape juice, by the way. I forgot it's the Kalbach show. Only grape juice. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, I'm getting ready for Purim and the Pesach Seder. I'm doing the wine tonight because you know what? All of this trash talking of Manhattan, we got to find some advantage of living in Manhattan. For me, it's not having to drive. <laughs> I don't have to drink and drive. I could just there drink. You go. Drink and walk. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you got, there's got to be a reason. You know, you got to find some advantage here or something. Don't drink and text. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to make the Hagafen on mostly red. I forgot if I put it in white, but I'll put it in a little bit. I baharu. following uh noah was singing i mean i'm sure you were listening but it was also the song that we have on page 22 of hodu lashem kitob kidalam chasto which is a song of being grateful giving thanks and acknowledgement because god's kindness is forever such a beautiful prayer and there's so much to be uh, to be grateful for you know it's just Sometimes we're thinking about the problem, but there's so many good things in our life. There's so many wonderful miracles here. And it doesn't mean everything is perfect and easy, but we still have to remember to be grateful for so many good things. So for every moment that you're worried, for every moment that you're nervous, I want you to have a hundred moments of joy and gratefulness and, 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 Gratitude. Okay, maybe 50 50 at least. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. More realistic. <laughs> but you know, move it, move it closer, move it closer. 
Okay, it talks about the carob, a special place in the bottom of 22. It says they survived in Rome by eating the fruit of the carob tree. That's because it was like dried, I guess. And page 23 has a story of Honey who planted a tree. Um, actually, no, who laughed at somebody planting a, a tree. And in the middle of 23, we're introduced to the world about Silut. And I'm going to read you um, a story from the Baal Shem Tov on the bottom of, in the bold, on the bottom of 23. So no, give me a little uh, little music for this. I'm, I'm not going to read it from the, the I'm not going to read it from the book. There was a king by the most beautiful daughter. And all the great men in the land and beyond wanted more than anything to be part of this kingdom, to have beauty, power, kingship. And each one of them said, king, king, I'm the most suitable to be the husband of your daughter. And the king said, I'll tell you what. Anyone who can get to my daughter, that will be the one that will be, I'll give permission, assuming she likes him. I give permission for that man to marry my daughter. The only thing is he put his daughter in a castle that was surrounded by moats and by rocks that went up 90 degrees and by brambles and barbed wire and wild animals. It was it, it just impossible to get into the castle. And one young man after another got ready to ascend the mountain to get into the castle and each one inevitably would fall, would get hurt, would give up and would return home. But there was one man who all he saw was the princess. He didn't, almost didn't notice the dangers in his way. He just saw the princess in his mind and he kept going over each obstacle one after another, but there still remain many obstacles, but he never, never gave up. He never thought of any of the things and reasons to turn back because all he could think about was the princess. And as he got closer, all of a sudden the remaining obstacles just disappeared. There were illusions. And once he saw there were illusions, he looked back and he realized that all of the obstacles were illusions. And with great joy, he completed his mission and got the princess, was able to get the hand of the princess in marriage. The Balshemtov, who told this parable, explained that each one of us is put here in this world. And the Shekhinah is the divine princess. And all we need to do is overcome the obstacles that are in our way to get to the divine princess. The only thing is many of us turn back because we only see the obstacle. We forget about the princess. But those whose love is so deep and so pure that all they see is the princess, God will eventually show them that the obstacles themselves are but an illusion. Page 24 on the bottom. Like the hero in the story, we face tremendous obstacles in our lives. We must overcome them by focusing on our goal, getting to the heavenly princess. As we come closer to the world of Atsilut, the concealment that are so much at the heart of the world of action, the inner obstacles, 
that remain in the world of formation and the subtle sense of separation that exists within the world of creation all recede into the background when it becomes clear that all that exists is within the divine. Now we have a beautiful song. Yehuda was going to join us tonight. I know. I was, I was and he just told it. me, he said he was here and he's coming. And then he said he has to go somewhere else, I guess. He wow. sometimes gets called last minute to do uh, whatever he has to do. So he didn't make it tonight. So Baruch Hashem, I heard Noah preparing this song. <laughs> kind of. Was, <laughs> kind of I, I, to I, back up Yehuda, but now it's going to be, yeah, uh, wait, okay. this is a song Please that. Please forgive it because I've never sung this. And I'm just, Yehuda, I was at Yehuda singing, I was playing. But yeah, know. Yehuda put, uh, put it on his CD. Of, he sang it. The lyrics are by Naomi Shemer, Naomi Shemer yeah. and, and Rav Nachman of Breslau, actually. I'll based on Rav Nachman of Breslau. Maybe Breslug. we'll do one or two verses. I don't know if I could do anything. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah just give, give the idea, you know. Page 25. The song of the of the grass and the and, and the growing things. So now the fruits, there are no fruits for this fourth world. Instead, we use our sense of smell, the most spiritual of our senses. Smell is the only sense not mentioned in the biblical story of the tree of knowledge. This is on page 26. All the other senses were involved. Only smell was left out because it is the closest to the soul and least corruptible of the senses. Wine. For the world of Atzilut, We drink red wine representing the fullness of the, the world of emanation coming to fruition. We make appropriate blessings for smelling a, a, a pleasant fragrance. Okay, so I'm going to pour the wine, the wine of the Holy Land of Israel, Shiloh legend. There's grape juice. I'd give you wine, but <laughs> I got to get you home. <laughs> Another time. Don't, don't Another time. Yeah. 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 One day. Okay. So we're going to make a bracha what, uh, on the Bissamim. I'm going to get some Bissamim. Why don't you do a song while I get the Bissamim? <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no,
we're going to make a bracha. You usually make a mini besamim, but we're going to make it on a nosen reach tov beperos. It goes, it's appropriate for today because we have fruits, good smelling fruits. So we're going to make the bracha. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Hanosen Reach Tov Peros. Mmm. Mmm. Delicious. Wow. And now we're gonna make the bracha on the last cup of wine. A bahata. I I just want to thank everyone for being part of this wonderful evening together. I'm sorry we can't physically be in the same room. Next year we'll be, Lashon Haba will be together. Prayer after eating and smelling all the fruits of the day. Page 27. May it be your will, Lord our God, and through the eating of these fruits that we have blessed that the trees be renewed to create new fruits and may our souls be rejuvenated like the new fruits that are sweet and satisfying. And it be merit to bring the first fruits to the coin in the temple. And may we once again sing a new song so that God's name may be praised from now and forever. The Shanna Abba, the Shanna Abba, the Shanna Abba, the Shanna Solomon, thank you everyone. Thank you. We're going to make a bracha achrona and then we're going to um, say hello for a few minutes and then we're going to daven marv. Okay. Hmm. I baru khatadi na la mel khalam ala ga fan bi apri ha ga fan bi ala in twa pri a in twa tnu ba sa sa wa wa de wa ala yet kan da ta wa i baru khaba shi ati sa bin khata da wa wa mai se do Lechon 
Does anybody need any fruit? Dragon fruit. Have some wine. Wine, yeah, wine fruits. We need a lot of wine. Hi, everyone. Hi, Shu. Again, I'm back to math, everybody. You got some mayo. David Barrett said it all, and Barbara. Don't to be part of this community. It's home. Right. Hi, Avi. Hi, Avi. Hi, Hi, everyone. Hi, 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 and that's Cheryl Watson. Hi. <laughs> oh, Cheryl. Hi. Hi. Hi, David and Nippity. Hi, Roberta. Hi, Chuck. This is good. This is, this is great that we're going to I'm going to see. I'm going to go on to my. Uh, really working. I'm starting it. It's really yeah. working. I'm getting better yeah. and better every single day. Oh, thank God. Thank you so much, everybody. Yeah. I can stop recording now. No, no. Yeah, sorry. you can stop. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for letting us know about this. Beautiful, Rabbi Citron. Oh, Rabbi Citron. It's special. So beautiful. Thank you. Get there, Rabbi. Yeah. <laughs> and Mazel Tov, Rabbi Naftali. Mazel Tov. Thank you. 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 Th